All right, what's up guys? This is Alex with Jack Motorsports. So I'm here to talk about the 2022 Formula Drift Prospect round of the Formula Drift Competition Series that we just did um, with this car. And um, I'll just go through the days and, and tell you what's going on. So Wednesday, uh, very typical, we just loaded in, we set up the car, uh, on, you know, got the pit set up how we should. Um, we only had like a three, three and a half hour drive, so um, we were actually able to do a lot of the prep work here at the house, like the bolt check, mounting the tires, getting everything kind of ready and squared up. So um, Wednesday was really just just to unpack and get settled in. It was very simple, uh, and we were very prepared for going into Thursday. Thursday was um, was practice and qualifying. We were only going to run on scrubs. Um, I had a surplus of scrubs here, and we we're a little bit of a low budget team, so we didn't have the funds to purchase a bunch of brand new tires for this round. So um, we had scrubs uh, pre-mounted and ready to go. And obviously on a scrub in Formula Drift, I can only get about a lap or two out of a set of tires. So every lap or two, um, I'd come in and, and swap out for another set of scrubs. Um, fortunately, we have 14 rims, so it's very easy to, uh, you know, just come in real quick and swap while the team is, is on a good rhythm. Um, mounting and, and getting the, the new tires ready for me for the next time I come in. Um, I got a bunch of practice laps in. Um, I was definitely struggling in the beginning uh, with the initiation. The initiation on the first turn is more of like the shape of a J, so it's more of a straight line and it kind of curves over really quickly. Uh, it's not a perfect arch. I know it looks like that sometimes in the videos and stuff, but in real life it's, it's definitely more of a straight line that curves out. and. Um, it can be really challenging in FD uh, to not only just get in the zone, um, but to be on throttle in that zone. Um, so I spent some the good half of the day uh, trying to, to get the car in the zone and also to get the, the tires lit up and, and throttling through the zone. But after we get, got through the initiation, the rest of the track flows pretty well. Um, Outer zone 2 is a very large uh, zone, and with the limited angle, um, I definitely found some limitations there, but uh, it's my job as a driver to adapt and, and uh, get through those, those things. So um, towards the end of practice, I was definitely feeling like I had the car ready to, to go in, into qualifying and competition. This LS has been in this car for five seasons now, supercharged, uh, and we've had no internal mechanical issues. We've had tensioners and belts and, and small things happen, but um, pistons, rods, heads, all the internals have been in, in great uh, condition and shape, and it's been very reliable. And I, uh, I heard a tick for the first time ever. Uh, very concerned as I knew qualifying was coming up in a couple hours, so. Uh, I quickly got on the radio, radio to the team that we had a, an internal engine tapping or knocking noise and I was coming in so we could take a look and diagnose what was going on. It was very um, evident that it was in the top half of the motor, it was definitely in the head, you could hear it on the uh, passenger side bank. And the discussion amongst the team was to like maybe should we just chill out for the next two hours and then go out and qualify with this tapping motor. That way we can guarantee at least, you know, we have that qualify lap and then we can have 20 hours to fix it before competition happens the following day. But uh, me being me, knowing that we still had two hours of practice, I was very eager to um, diagnose and figure it out. So uh, quickly we got some tools and we pulled off the valve cover and uh, we found that we had a bent push rod. Um, this is what was crack lacking and making all the tapping and knocking in my head. Um, we did check the lifter, the lifter is okay, it was just this, this push rod, so 
Um, this car has stock push rods in it, and I was very fortunate that uh, we spoke to another driver, Robert Thorne. Um, he had a bunch of these just laying around in his trailer because he upgraded to hardened push rods and was very nice to give me one. Um, I was really proud of my team. Uh, this catastrophic engine noise that I was for sure going to take me out of competition uh, was repaired and I was back on track and in less than an hour. I think I was off the track for maybe 40 minutes. So, uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, my team is, is great. And with that, uh, good energy and those good vibes, I was very eager to go back out. Um, there wasn't much practice left at this point, but I was like, you know, let me get back in that rhythm where I'm, you know, I'm laying down some good, good laps and, and uh, getting ready to go into qualifying. Um, I had two really, really good laps. And remember, we're on scrubs, so I can only do like one or two laps. Um, but I was very, you know, high on the moment. I was, I was having fun. I was, I just killed it. We just fixed this, this engine knock. So, um, I, I miscounted and, and forgot where I was. And I, I went back out for a third lap. Now, for those of you who already know, um, New Jersey did not end well for us. Um, on that third lap. I was chasing Tommy Lemaire, and uh, I I was in his smoke line. He's like he's a great driver, so I know to just you know in the chase position, just drive through the smoke, and you'll come out of the smoke, and you'll be right where you want to be, right on the on the lead car's door. Um, but unfortunately, I, I came to a an immediate stop as I I hit a wall. Um, I never even saw the wall. I was just driving through the smoke, um, and. Uh, I, I caused a lot of damage to the car. It was, we were out of competition. I was unable to, to fix all the broken parts. Um, so if you'd like to see the broke parts, let me show you what they look like. Here is our gorgeous rear subframe that is now absolutely garbage. Uh, we have all these bends right here. Um, not how it's supposed to look. It's supposed to look more like this. Um, this side is definitely messed up. Um, a crack right here. Um, on the other side, we have another crack right there. Uh, and then also the upper control arm uh, was supposed to be mounted here. It is no longer. So uh, there might be other things that are wrong with the subframe that I can't even see or know about. But uh, that subframe is, is no longer useful. Uh, here is our drop knuckle by PBM. Um, and it just broke right in half. I'm really happy it broke here, uh, as the wheel and the hub and everything was still able to, to still move, so it was easy to get on and off the tow and uh, get it in the trailer, which was very convenient. Um, the upper control arm, uh, you might not be able to tell. It does have a, a natural arc it's supposed to, but this arc was just, you know, now it's bent a little bit higher. Uh, maybe if I uh, hit this with an hammer, I'll step on it a couple of times. Let's just straighten back out. Right. <laughs> and then here's the lower control arm. It just got, I mean, it just got all kinds of bent up. It's right here and right here. It's its all bent up. So, um, it, the high stayed intact, which is amazing, but uh, usually that's a fail point. But I hit this wall pretty hard. So, uh, as far as aesthetics go, uh, we do have a couple scrapes, scratches here. I haven't done anything with the aesthetics yet. The bumper got some, some love here. Um, the bulk of the hit was definitely right here in the right rear, just boom, so. Uh, and then also, the front had a little bit of damage. Uh, we bent a tie rod. Um, nothing too catastrophic, but we bent a tie rod. And, um, the, con the, uh, front knuckle, um, got bent up a little bit, but we were able to bend it back, so. Not the end of the world as far as the front goes. Uh, coilovers are back at Fortune Auto. They're going to rebuild them for us. So now that you've seen all the broken parts, you know that um, there's just no way that we were going to get back out uh, for qualifying. Uh, unfortunately, this, this plummeted at my overall standings because I didn't get any serious points for attending the round. I didn't get any qualifying points or competition points. So um, we're not exactly where we want to be right now overall for the series. but. We're just halfway through. We still have two rounds to fix that, so. 
uh, to, I guess to conclude this video on, on Friday and Saturday, which were both competition days. Um, I just spent the days um, engaging with fans, talking with fans, uh, engaging with my sponsors as well. We did really good. We sold a lot of merch and, and merchandise. So um, we actually raffled off one of these rims. Uh, one of the rims got damaged in the accident and all the fans wanted it so bad. So I thought it'd be fun to do a little raffle and, and it was great. I had a great time engaging and, and, and team working with my sponsors, uh, you know, concluding some sales and getting our name out there. So. That was a, a really cool experience, but um, definitely looking to drive a lot more for the next round. So uh, stay tuned, and I look forward to doing another recap video and tell you how St. Louis goes. Until then, I'll see you guys. Thank you.